Good morning. I have this over here. Good morning. How are we doing today? I got all sidetracked. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow, by the way. The Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. Yes. Look, we are both wearing flowers. Ta-da. Yeah. And yours matches your sweater. I left, I left the one I was going to wear at home. So we have a few left in the shop. And I was like, purple. Mm. 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 Yeah, it's been a day already. Yeah. I realized you know, I, I was running on covering up vents that aren't pushing out heat. They're pushing out something else. And I, I, I sidetracked. Okay. Just like they're lightning working on and they're brain and lightning. What? What what working in a yarn shop is like. Yes. It's like the opening scene of um, Robin Hood Men in Tights where leave us alone Mel Brooks and all the houses are on fire. And, you know, cause it happens every time that he does a. I can't remember Robin that Hood scene, movie. but okay. It's in the opening credits. I'll have to go Men back and watch that now. Yeah. Like, cause every Robin Hood movie starts with a, like a house, like a village burning down or something. Yeah. The, the, like not again. And, you know, go watch that. Tell us what you think. <laughs> no, I have, um, I, I, when I come in, I bring in one of these little guys because Liz gives me coffee in one of these little guys and I usually leave it over there. And, and it's a heavy one today because I'm bringing back her empty coffee mug. That's right here. And this arrived so late last night, I haven't enjoyed it yet. I have snacks for today. I will not eat this all today. It feels like a lump. I hope they didn't all squish together and they was mailed to me. 1,500 kids for trick-or-treating, they said. It'll be fun, they said. We went through a quarter of the candy we bought. Yeah. And then but, we took it home. <laughs> and then and then my my sugar gene was triggered. And they didn't someone was talking, I want to say on knit night, about um the pumpkins. The, you know, I got candy corn and Ingles ran out of candy corn real fast this year. And then they were talking about the pumpkins and it never had the pumpkins. And some of these are looking sad in there. So we'll just see, this could be sad, a mistake, but I'm willing to waste about 20 bucks on a mistake. If there's some edible candy in here, <laughs> this was not 20 bucks. Two of these was probably about 15 or 16 bucks. So yeah. That means I can have one at home and one at the shop and hide it from the grubby kids who come in looking for not yarn and see candy. Um, not all children are grubby. I was not intending to say that. I do love children, just not when they eat my candy out of an open container. So, cause COVID. All right. Uh, <laughs> how's your day going? Uh, <laughs> I finished so, my sweater. Yay. Let's talk about that first. Okay. Well, I finished my, well, this you is probably why coffee. I'm, yeah, coffee. So I should, some, I should put some some candy corn in my coffee. <laughs> There's already sugar in here. I'm fine. So, yes, look at that. Like the garter kind of. I, like I still think you could you could leave all those ends hanging and just start a new trend. Mm. Okay. See, there's no there's, ends there's no here. front ribbing. There's just, no front ribbing. I kind of like just, that. It's like, like that. the garter will relax and you know. It will overcome. block with wear. It'll block with wear. <laughs> so, like. Blue sleeve, gold cuff. I like it. So it's, it's drop. This is what we would call a drop, drop sleeve, sleeve sweater yep. because the, the sleeves start down here. It's a big box. And that means that it comes down. My sweater is a raglan seam sweater because you have increases here that gently slope it out. And then the arms just kind of magically come off of that. You put this them on was a like, so back. you picked up easy. stitches around the edge of the boxy shape to, and went to build. Down. Yes. Yeah. You and interesting. You seemed with your with your Congress. color on purpose. Yeah, yeah. She she did a seaming. Okay. Oh, we should talk about the back of this because it's amazing. So yes, you have one piece of your um, dreads that are hanging down on it. That's not really a problem. It's one of the little braids. I could I could help. Hang on here. Yeah, there. <laughs> I could help her. I could just point it out. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? chonky chonky cables with this is mirasol ushia which is this lovely braid like chainette super bulky yarn that i've made the moonflower cardigan out of and it only took me like six to make this gorgeous like foopy house coat longer than what she's wearing 
You you think it's going to take how many if if it was only done in one color? If it was only done in one color, I think it's only going to take like it says four and a half for the yardage. I'm do it by you know five. And she had me order a new color so she can make one out of a single color, which means eventually I'm going to have to get some more Ushi in. So I wore a long sleeve top today. And in fact, this is coming off because <laughs> I'm about to spontaneously. Combust. I was about to say, so you sewed with your your sleeve color, which means you can see it, which is very cute. But there are ways to do that where where it's almost hidden if you want. If I had it. used green, if you had used green, nobody it would have, would have seen absolutely hidden any um, of that. There are still ways to do it where it's almost hidden. But like, see right in here, like that's, yep. you know, as as hidden as it really gets. But that's. But I'm not walking around with my armpits up. So not gonna walk around like this all day, Liz. No. But okay, so like the fastest ever, because it's 19 needles. When and did, when did you start this sweater? Started it Friday night. Less than a week. Yeah. And you actually spent time working on other projects. Yeah. If you had only worked on this project, it I would bet, have been done. I bet you could have done it in like two or three I, days. Yeah. I did. The sleeves flat, like she calls to do them in the round. And um, I did them flat. And it was because you just have to sew, like, according to the pattern, if you do the sleeves in the round, all you have to sew up is like the three inches mm -hmm. here. But it really wasn't any big hardship to sew up the. It's super cute. Yeah. It is super. So it's you fun. have no you ends. You can wear in. it. You can wear it when. Um... When you go out for your three to five. Yes, it is super, super warm. Like I came in in boots and socks because and I had to wear shoes. And it was cold and nasty. And the, yeah. like, um, did we even do introductions? Cause I don't remember talking about the weather. I don't. Hi, I'm Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> you got sidetracked with all the stuff going on. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in like, not quite freezing rain, but really close, rainy and cold and nasty Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. And she and she's the minion in a lovely sweater. It should be um it should be noted that some of the lovely colors in her sweater are discontinued. are discontinued. So she may have bought the last of them, or there may be very little left in the shop. So if you're like, I want one just like Liz's. It okay. took how many skeins of yarn it, when you changed colors? I, I had seven different colors and it one of the the teal blue i had to use two skeins so yeah There's you're buying up more colors if you want one just like mine if you want one stripey it's going to cost a lot more than one out of a single color it's just i mean that's that's general wisdom on any sweater except for maybe like the striped sweater where four you need four skeins of yarn anyway so why not buy four colors and you the know. colors that i striped in the in the stripey part mm -hmm. I didn't use hardly any of them. It was the sleeves, the back. Yeah. Like, like this sweater um, I made out of Cascade Eco Plus Merino, which is these giant, like 250 gram skeins. And I used one and a half of the purple eggplant color. So I had like half a skein left over and I didn't even use a full skein. I had a lot left over of the olive oil color of this too. Like when you stripe yeah. stuff, you have leftovers and sometimes that means it's a much more expensive sweater so and my response to you know when i work at a yarn shop for yarn so like she gets an employee discount i, I buy she all does the still colors. pay me for the yarn but yeah. she she gets an employee discount i i because I, I don't pay her what she I can afford to buy all the colors and you yes. know do all the the fun but yeah it but everyone's got to work within their own budget yeah. and we totally understand and respect that. So, you know, make it in a single color could be really pretty. I I'm hoping like this has inspired me to maybe we'll, we'll place an Ushia order soon. And when we do, there's a really good chance when it comes in, if we are flush with Ushia that we will um, put it on as product of the week, who knows, but um, what was the name of that one? Again, I know we put it in Tuesdays. It's the cropped fisherman cardigan cropped fisherman's in merino cardigan number five in merino yeah in merino number five it's by mango something loopy mango loopy mango i knew there was mango in the title um it would look fantastic in chill 
Like, mm-hmm. um, I have it a, will, a sweater. It will out take of chill, which is our our single ply super bulky. It will take more than five. Yeah, Ushia. Okay, so here's the crazy thing. Like, this is a, a good uh, first topic for dear Becky and Lizzie, and then we do have one question. Um, but it's kind of on the same vein of like, let's talk about something on a knitting theme today. Um, what I've discovered with different constructions of yarn. So the, the classic construction like this is a twist, right? Is, is twisted and plied. And that can be kind of heavy. The, um, what Liz's is made out of, one of the new fads, I mean, I shouldn't say fad, I should say trend. A fad implies it's gonna be here and gone. A trend is something that it's lasted for a while. Um, is chainette yarn. So it's yarn that looks more braided or almost like an I-cord and it's hollow in the center rather than this is solid all the way through. It's a, it's a, a thick twist of different plies of yarn. The chainette provides the warmth without the weight. It's, so the, the Ushia is very lightweight. So mm-hmm. five skeins of that I well, can wear and not feel like I have on a super bulky sweater. And the flip side of that is five skeins for a sweater versus like probably 10 of the chill. There's over a hundred yards. There's like 114 yards on the Ushia. Yeah. So it's still a hundred gram skein. They're the, they weigh yeah. the same if you put them on the scale, but you get more yardage out of a super bulky than you do mm. uh, than of a chainette yes. than you do out of a ply because it doesn't weigh as much. That fluffiness, it's against the warmth without the weight means if you just looked at the stats of the Ushia, not knowing what it was, if I saw 100 grams and 114 yards, I would say that's a bulky yarn. That's a number five. And but it's not because it it if you knit it on a smaller needle, I've, it might work, but it but it I've, would be really tight. I knit wouldn't. Ushia on like a 10, 10 yeah. and a half, and it is really tight and really thick and. Like technically it's it'll work happy. because a chainette, you can, you can stretch out a chainette and it look a lot thinner than it yeah. is, but that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to trap air in the center and be fluffy and warm. So yeah, you, you can't always go. I mean the, so chill is what 52 yards mm-hmm. for a hundred grams. And that's just a single ply, uh, loosely twisted, but like, it's just solid yarn. And um, not that it's super heavy, but again, you don't get as much yardage for the same amount of weight. Well, it's you you did a sweater out of chill. Mm-hmm. And, and it took me like at least 12, 13, maybe 14. And it was also changing color. So yeah. I wasn't using whole skeins. Like I had leftovers, but it took but, me up. And it is ton. so heavy yeah. that you can it's, only it's wear pretty, it. It's, it's like wearing a weighted blanket. Yeah. So, um, but I was, I was looking for a yarn for someone yesterday, the day before, and the yarn it called for was the yardage implied it would be worsted weight, but it was bulky. And the reason it was a bulky is because it was a chainette is so you couldn't just go by yardage. It's really hard to make assumptions based on the yardage that a skein of yarn says it has, or that a yarn for a pattern says it has, unless you know the construction of the mm-hmm. yarn. It's not a universal, oh, it's, it's, you know, it, it's a hundred and it, it was, it's about 220 yards for a hundred grams. And I went, okay, that sounds like a worsted. Should we be looking in the worsted section? And then I looked it up on Ravelry and it was a chainette. So I was like, we could do a worsted, but it's going to be really thin for your project probably, or, you know, and someone might like that. But I said, we should probably look at the chunky yarns, the bulky yarns, in which case, you'll probably need more skeins of it if it's not a chainette. I don't know if we have a good, we have one. We have one other Mirasol that looks like a worsted, but technically is a chunky. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this person also wanted a variegated yarn and that's not what we have in that. So yeah, there's there's nuances and we try our best here with the nuances. And the, there is no governing body that says if you're making yarn, there's no standard standard. Like it's not like all bulkies are the same thickness. Yeah. Yeah. I know anyone who goes into this game thinking that you're going to be sorely disappointed. I, I follow a, a designer who's like, when I design patterns, I can tell you what yarn I used and what needles and gauge I got. Mm-hmm. But if you choose to change the yarn, 
And sometimes people don't have a choice to change the yarn. Like we don't carry every yarn a designer uses. So, yeah. um, but if one fu fuzzy yarn company says that it's this weight and fluffy yarn company <laughs> says it's this weight, there's nobody to, to sit there and go, no, no, it's actually this weight. Yeah, it's if you if you change sad. the yarn for a pattern, and like, but it's a number five and it says to use a number five. It doesn't mean the same needles are magically going to work and get you the right gauge. It's, it, you have to test your gauge unless it's something that you don't care about your gauge on like a shawl or a scarf. With a lot of mittens and hats, I will wing it and hope for the best. But if it comes out looking different than the pattern says it, sh it should, I'm not going to blame the pattern. I'm going to say, you know, I probably should have tested my gauge. I, I generally wing it but on hats, but I've been mm -hmm. burned. You have been, I remember. <laughs> on size <laughs> two needle. <laughs> like, it can happen. It was bad. It was bad. So, you know. It was but, bad to start with because she was on needles that shouldn't exist shouldn't in exist. her world. And then it didn't work right. And it was just sadness, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like knitting with your tail. Like, yeah. yes, which I've only done once. I've done it lots of times. And when my tail is really long, it just sucks. Because, and it's funny in lessons, it's always tie up your tail so you don't knit with it. But when you're sitting in the comfy chair at work, starting a new project, when you're an expert knitter, I'm not going to knit with my tail. It's going to be fine. No, experts and beginners, we all make the same mistakes. Yep. All of us. And anyone who says they don't make mistakes like that, they could be perfect. More likely they're either lying or they've forgotten their mistakes. They might not be intentionally lying to you. Uh, they might not be devious of devious person, but they may have blacked out their mistakes because they're too traumatic to, to want to recall. So, but we all make them. So they shouldn't be traumatic. They should just be part of life. This is what life Every, is. Uh, you make mistakes in life. So why can't you make mistakes in the knitting or The shield of perfection is a heavy one. Put it by the side of the road. Leave it behind. It's all good. Speaking of um, experts and advanced, and uh, <laughs> yes, you segued segue. beautifully I, into our question. I, I would, I would try to claim responsibility and say I meant it that way, but I didn't. No, I'm not gonna. I'm I even not, sent I'm not you, that good. I sent you a copy of the. the you did, and I forgot. And you forgot it. This rings a bell. <laughs> For mentioning that book. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what we're going to talk about today. Go ahead. Dear Becky and Lizzie, glad you are both, or glad you both are beginning to feel better after your booster shot. Ooh. It took me a while too. Ooh, ooh, interjection because it relates to that. So we're both feeling better. I, I do have a weird headache like right here right now, but um, whereas the achies feel better and stuff, I am getting my Moderna arm. It's itching Itchy. now oh, and it's no. all red and like, it's like, rah, mine, mine, because I scratched it tender. I'm but itching. I'm trying so hard not to scratch things. It is the worst. <laughs> it is the worst. I had it's it like, my second time. I have, I have the red here and I have a little bit of red, like just because I probably scratched it in my sleep. I tried putting, I tried putting moisturizer on it today and just doing this is, I shouldn't have done that. No, it's no. itchy. No. Go get your shot. Don't worry about it, but it's itchy and just deal with it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, sorry. <laughs> back, to, back to knitting, she says. She knew she there knew was going to be a do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I it, love that people know us so well. <laughs> if I see a pattern that says beginner, intermediate, or advanced level, what do these levels mean? What stitches might I encounter in patterns that are listed for each of these levels? And if I can knit advanced patterns, does that mean I am an advanced knitter? Unleveled. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't use the, that. That's a bad, that's a bad sign in some cultures. And so I shouldn't do that because my, they might think I'm giving them the finger when I mean to be saying yes. Good questions. Very good. All very good questions. So here's the thing. Um, I was when she sent me the screenshot last night, I said, well, that's another fun thing we can talk about and not necessarily have really clear cut answers on because there's a range. It's it's like yarn. It's like yarn weights, right? They're, Lessons for life. You know, it's just yes. We have a lot of knitters who come in and go, I've been knitting for 30 years and I'm not very good. And all I do is washcloths. So I'm a beginner, but they've been knitting for their whole lives. 
I've seen some washcloth patterns. And let me tell you, if you can knit washcloths, you can knit. If Just, you know how to increase and decrease, yeah. there's so many things you can do. Okay, here's here's the one thing I'll say. If you can do a pattern that is marked as advanced, then yes, you should you should definitely say I am an advanced knitter. You should own that and claim it and shout it from the rooftops, but be careful. I am not a fan of shouting it from the rooftops in a way that you put others down. That is yeah. one thing I will say because we also have knitters who come in and say my friend says I'm not a good knitter. Like a friendship where one person is like, I'm the better knitter and you will stay in your lane. That's not a good friendship, in my opinion. And you know, like, like it should be a, I'm an advanced knitter and, and let's work on this together. And let's, you know, let's have you be in the same place as me. Like we should be supporting each other and uplifting each other mm-hmm. instead of like, I need someone to be better than. So yeah. you're it today. Like, oh, that doesn't rub me the right way. Oh. Well, when we, we have knitters come in and they say I'm a beginner. And they may not even know they're doing it. Anyway, Rebecca's, Rebecca's rule of thought is an advanced beginner is someone who can knit and purl and maybe do an increase. Yeah. Okay. So like, for, yeah, for me, well, honestly, for me, a beginner is someone who's learning to knit and purl. Yes. And once you know how to knit and purl, I put you in the advanced beginner category because you have the skills to learn everything else. And so that, that doesn't put you in the advanced knitter category, but, um, but you're on the way. I, I firmly believe in not necessarily giving someone more credit than they should have, but encouraging people to, to stretch if they want to. Like you can... Um, you can do more. I'm sorry. I got distracted because I think I just saw a new male person already, oh. which means anyone who was going to get a package, you'll get it tomorrow because it's already gone out. We're, we, I think they're training new male people and we try to have them pick up packages from us and they may not be aware of that. So, um, I'm hoping our, our usual male person is okay. I am too. But anyway, sorry, digression. So, um, <laughs> we care about everybody here so and, and i mean that in the, in the most honest way possible getting back to the levels of difficulty and patterns the tough part about answering this question is that different companies and different pattern writers and and everybody like leisure arts ha- they have different ways of marking their patterns of establishing what is beginner and intermediate and advanced. And uh, and then there's the joke that I see online all the time that if it's marked heirloom. Oh, no. <laughs> if it's marked heirloom, it doesn't matter what what level of Everybody knitter you are. problems with that. Back away slowly. Yeah. Light the pattern on fire and just, <laughs> just, walk away. just walk away. Or just be ready for what you're going to encounter if you try to do it. It, 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 it can be heirloom knitting could be easy for anybody or it could be extremely difficult for everybody mm-hmm. and you still know back way slowly just but other than that we've had it's its own category we've had knitters who have started knitting like learn to knit on a pair of socks yeah we've had crocheters who learned to crochet on charlotte's universe blanket everybody everybody does their own sorry distraction is it the one from the last three days no it's someone else oh which is why she's so early and she's looking over here like what is that and i'm probably trying to figure out the route so she might be coming back anyway i'm sorry um like leisure arts and some other older companies they have like they'll put dots right they'll have this bar of like how many one dot and two dots and three dots and like Mm -hmm. but what they mark as intermediate, another pattern writer like Cascades pattern books might mark as easy and, and vice versa. Like there, there's, there's a range. What I like about Ravelry is Ravelry, um, so the online database, Ravelry.com, if you're not familiar with it, a lot of the patterns published there, there's what the pattern writer has, thinks it is. And then there is what all the people who've rated it, either because they've done it or they're familiar with what's going on in it, they will take the ratings that people give it and they will give it, there's a little bar on the listing where it will say like, 
it's basically the more green that fills the bar, the harder it is. So if you're looking for, they, they have ways to filter based on easy, medium, but that could be based on what the pattern writer has established it as. And, and the pattern writer might say, this is a piece of cake, but they're used to doing really difficult stuff. So what they mark as easy, you might not think is a beginner level pattern, but you can always look at how people I, have, have ranked it. I, I not only look at the ranking, but I go in and look at the projects mm -hmm. because on Ravelry, you can pull up every, if, if people choose to put their projects up and some, a lot of people will put notes up and like my brioche flame hat, it's brioche and cables. And I read the project notes and people were like, this was my first brioche project and it was easy to follow. And this was my first cables and brioche and it was great. I was scared of the provisional cast on. Like I had nightmares about it. I worked at a yarn shop, but it's a, provisional it's a cast different, on scared me. And I would put provisional cast on, which can involve a crochet hook into like maybe at least an intermediate category. Yeah. But um, but the question that said, what should I expect in the pattern? Like what skills, what things should I need to know? That's that's dependent on the pattern, unfortunately. Like, it's not like someone has declared, like, henceforth, all intermediate patterns will have this skill set. And if you don't have this skill set, we will classify them as beginner. The, the, the papillon. People walk in all the time and go, oh, that is such, that's so that's far hard. beyond I my skill set. And I'm like, the hardest thing about it is following the pattern. And they're like, what? Yeah, if you can't follow a pattern or if you don't like following patterns, that will be a challenge. Yeah. But there's no pearls. There's in it. no pearls. It's just it's short in, rows. It's, it's simple short rows. It's knitting, it's increases, which some people aren't familiar with yet. Yeah. So that, that puts it beyond a beginner level, I would say. And there's short rows, which again is something that you might be like, what the heck? That sounds complicated. Not once you get used to it. Like I firmly believe i tell people when they walk in this is one of my mantras for knitting if you know how to knit and purl i can teach you to make anything in the shop it may take time there may be new skills involved but you have the foundation to get there yeah. no matter what level you put yourself you say that's advanced beginner again i call you advanced beginner at that point um i say a beginner is someone who doesn't know anything and is just starting out advanced beginner is you have a few you can probably get probably get stitches on your needle you know one way to cast on at least and you know how to knit and purl i put you in the advanced beginner category when, when i started knitting I'll hang after that crocheting one. for 20 years i could i could knit rebecca showed me how to cast on long tail cast on Whee! i could knit yay <laughs> i couldn't figure out how to cast off like how do you get it off the needle like hook it's easy you just pull the last bit of the yarn through and you're done there's a lot of easier things about crochet there's a lot of harder things about crochet yeah, yeah. yeah. i'd done it for 20 years yeah. so it was easy to me but knitting it was like how do you stop like you just go ah <laughs> I, no. I i i'm i'm done with whatever i'm doing now how do i make the bad man stop like <laughs> how do i make it go away <laughs> stop <laughs> Cause there's all these loopy things on. And one, of, I ran into one of our knitters at Ingalls and I was like, yeah, I'm done, almost done with my project. And I just don't know how to stop. And she goes, it's easy. You knit one, you knit the second one, you pull the first one over the top of the second one. And I was like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Although for anyone who's not used to that, just sometimes the, when I, when I work with customers, like the wordage it yes. makes sense to one person and not to another, but you know, see and do and yes, but you, you, you heard that I, and you went, I went, Oh, and then you need another one and pull one over. Yeah. Um, okay. That makes sense. But there are, I have a whole book here of beginning of cast bind cast on bind off. And there's like 2000 ways. So there's options, right. But there's some basics that puts you at that advanced beginner level. Um, unless the pattern writer tells you up front, you may not know what skills you're going to encounter in a pattern and um and what it's class even and again what it's classified as may not give you an indication of what skills are going to be needed or going to be learned 
by making the project, a right? A good pattern writer in the pattern, maybe not up front on Ravelry or whatever, but in the pattern, will write down and write out what you yes, need to know. A good pattern, and I always like to clarify, not all patterns are good. They're still, some of them are still worth making because they're pretty. Yeah. But the pattern writer might have made some assumptions. Yeah, a good pattern writer will assume that you don't know any of the abbreviations. And somewhere, like Liz is saying, somewhere in the pattern will we'll walk you through what the abbreviations mean or what the stitches mean. I've seen some really great patterns where they take pictures and show yeah. you for crochet stitches. I should, I should have the addendum to my, when someone comes in and says, and I say to them, if you know how to knit and purl, I can teach you to make anything in the shop. For a crochet, or if they walk in, I say, if you know how to single and double crochet, I can teach you to make anything in the shop. Even if it has triples and other, and cuffs and, it's all based on the same stuff. But again, a good pattern, if it's something beyond the basics like knit and purl, they should at least write out what it means to do a fancier stitch. If not, it's just to talk you through what to do, if not have some pictures or something like that. And, and it depends on the pattern writer, what they're capable of conveying in the pattern. Um, like I said, some patterns, they're still pretty. And even if they're not a good pattern, we'll still do them because we want the results, but it might take some more to figure it out. So, yeah. I, I found some patterns that like for top-down raglan sweaters that made assumptions, but I already, because I had found a wonderful initial top-down raglan sweater, I already knew how it kind of went together. Mm -hmm. So I could piece together the assumptions that, and, and, you and know. some, some of that is what makes a person an advanced beginner or an intermediate or an advanced knitter is just the more you do, the more tools you have in your belt to help you figure out a pattern and the more you can comfortably put yourself in a more advanced category. It's okay to put yourself in a higher category than you think you are. Yeah, I don't call it pride to do that. I say then you're just being ambitious, which is good. So, and I don't, um, there isn't, there isn't like, if you do lace, you're this. If you do this, you're there's that. There's different levels of lace. There's different levels of lace and then and beginners can do lace. It's, Advanced beginners can do lace. And then it's, well, you're an expert knitter because you can do everything except fix your mistakes. Does that knock you down a peg or, you know, like. And that's, again, that becomes competition and that becomes, yeah. are you better or worse than someone else? And I don't like that. No, but like where, because like we have knitters who took your 50 or your, your fix your mistakes class after mm -hmm. knitting for 50 years. They had no idea how to fix mistakes. Like, and they they can knit anything. They wouldn't consider themselves experts, but well, like they can knit anything. But fixing the mistakes they make, like, they like just designed they element or yeah. frogged it or whatever. Well, and and I wouldn't even put like her question didn't even didn't even approach expert. Yeah. And expert's a tough thing because you can be an advanced knitter and still no, not know how to do everything. Like, I don't know how to do everything, but I think I'm pretty advanced and that's okay. And it depends on where your comfort level yeah. is. I don't well, like to purl. <laughs> so some of the stuff I do is not ever going to get to where people would think I'm not doing it's my not master's like in knitting. Yeah, Let's but be there is a master's in knitting from the Knitting Guild of America and it's three levels and it's very intensive. And at the end of it, you can claim to be a, a, like, you get a pin, you get street cred in the knitting world. Guess what? I stalled out on level one and yet I, I still consider myself a pretty advanced knitter and I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, advanced doesn't mean expert or doesn't mean you know everything. And to backtrack a little bit, because we do have to go and we should be going now, but we're going to go in a couple minutes. We're going to wrap this up um, to something else Liz said. For, so for what to expect in a pattern, there's no hard and fast rule. On Ravelry, if the pattern writer has taken the time to tag it correctly or put in their listing, they may give you a heads up. You need to know these skills to do this pattern. Or these are the tags of like, those little bubbles on Ravelry of what to expect um, when you like when when you do the pattern that these the, skills will be involved in it. The the half. But you don't have to know how to do those to do the pattern. You can learn them by doing the pattern. The hat that I did on teeny tiny needles that I should have gauge watched. Before you buy the pattern in their write up, it was 
these are what you need to be able to do or need to learn to do to do the pattern. It was color work and a provisional cast on and um and they'll say these are the skills yeah. in the pattern. Doesn't the mean skill, you have to yeah. know them, but know that you'll and have challenges if you don't. If you buy the pattern and want to do it, we are not the resource to ask. Mm -hmm. Like which, some pattern writers will just say, don't, you know, if you don't know it, don't yeah. come asking me because they don't have time. Yeah. Like and then I was come here. <laughs> I was okay with that because I yeah. live at my local yarn shop. So <laughs> I was like, you know, you but, go Rebecca. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but to assume that there's stuff in the pattern that you can then go, hey, how do you do this to the pattern writer is kind of like, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if they say up front, this stuff is in here and we haven't necessarily explained because you should be able to figure it out. A lot of pattern writers will have links to videos they found and, and that's really helpful. Not yeah. all pattern writers will have the time and energy to do that or the wherewithal, the know-how to be able to do that. So that makes it hard to pin down, but I would say, okay, so if, we, if I had to come up with beginner, intermediate, advanced, and again, some of these skills, I'm like, I don't think they're that hard but they might get put in certain categories, like beginner knits and pearls, maybe increases and decreases may come up in a beginner level pattern. What a lot of people would classify as beginner level. Um, maybe some basic lace work, which are, which are combining yarn overs with, with decreases to keep the number of stitches the same. That's essentially how you get lace work is you add holes and you take away stitches to compensate for those holes. So on, on something that stays regular, there's other options too. Intermediate, um, I would start adding things into intermediate, like more complicated lace work. It's tough to put something like, like cables, I would put an in intermediate because I don't think they're super hard. People think they are, but they're not. They just involve another needle, which again, makes people's brains go, you know, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Brioche is something that I might put at intermediate level, but others might put at an advanced level. And, and it really depends. Like everyone's got their own comfort zone on things like that. Um, things like stockinette and garter, which are just different ways and, and seed stitch and ribbing, different ways to combine knits and pearls. I still put that at a beginner level, so. And ultimately it's kind of like, if you think of it like being in the medical, a doctor like ev anybody who knits is a doctor but everybody has their own specialty like some people just make socks mm -hmm. or mostly stick to socks and some people love sweaters so that's like and pediatrics versus like gastroenterology yeah but or like <laughs> they're all doctors like everybody okay, following can the knit. analogy now first Sorry. i was like but people tend to yeah. go into their specialty so like one person who's an intermediate level in socks might not be able to do lace work mm -hmm. like yeah yeah and maybe it's just because they haven't tried they yeah. could but um my analogy would be like like people like because i used to run people who run or do track and field or that kind of thing and um yeah if you even attempt to run i would call you a runner but then there's the specialties. There's people who sprint and there's people who do marathons and, uh, or endurance races or things like that. And, and just because you can do an endurance race doesn't mean you're good at sprinting. Yeah. Or you just haven't trained for that. You know, there's, we could push a lot of analogies over the cliff, but, yeah. um, but that's the long winded, not necessarily giving you a definitive answer to that question of, um, like drop stitches, I might put an intermediate. Yeah, there's there's so many different skill sets. But once you start knitting, if you know the basic stitches, as long as you've got some patience or forgiveness for yourself or um, the ability to roll with it, if it messes up and you have to start again or back out or something, you the sky's the limit, I find, once you know some of the basics. There, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of design elements that might, if, if you have to kind of let go of perfection. And that's hard for some people to let go of. This may not come out perfect, but it's going to look pretty cool. You can do, I would even be willing to encourage you to tackle, um, encourage you to be willing to do things that are marked beyond where your skill set, you think your skill set is. Mm -hmm. 
you might surprise yourself. So even if you say, I'm just an advanced beginner, you could tack, if you really, really want to, you could tackle something that is, is rated far beyond that and have a really good success rate. I, one of my examples is um, the, I bought this Rowan book, like pattern book that I really, it had all these classic vintage patterns in it. I really seriously bought it as a coffee table book. And I kept looking at the coat on the cover and I was like, I can't make that, but I really want to, but I really, really want to. And finally, I, I ordered the yarn for it through my local yarn store. And um, I sat, it took me two years, maybe three years to make. And it sat time out for a really long time. It was like every right side row, four out of every st six stitches was cabled. It's this basket weave, beautiful thing. I never thought I could actually make it, but I finally just said, it's calling my name, I have to try. And it is still to this day, it doesn't really fit me well because it's this double breasted coat. I just don't close it, but I can still wear it. And I, I've worn it for years now. And it's one of my most favorite things that I've ever knit. So I would, I, what I would leave you with is don't let where you think you are as a knitter or crocheter stop you from trying something that you think might be out of your league because you might be surprised. It might take some time, it might take three years, but you, I bet you'd be surprised. So yeah. yeah. We should have opened the shop about 10 minutes ago. Ooh. So we're gonna go. Um, and I think that clock is actually slow. So we're gonna go. No. Um, but I, I was, we were having fun. So uh, I hope you all have a good day. We have knit night tomorrow night from six to 9 p.m. Join Zoom, it's, it's virtual still. Join Zoom with the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. If you wanna give us a question to talk about some Thursday during our Dear Becky and Lizzie edition, you can write us at Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Or if that is not um, your jam, to write things and send them. If you're much more comfortable with email, you can email. Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. She keeps track of them because they get lost in my email. And we will see you next week if we don't see you Friday. Don't so. forget to set your clocks back this week. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's going to change everything next week. And we'll try to tell you next week when we film. Um, sit and Stitch will be for people and not doing the daylight savings stuff the US does. Sit and Stitch will be an hour earlier, right? Is that how well, close we fall Europe, back? Europe's already fallen back. Yes, yeah, so it and will still change for yeah, people who are will, in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Not and the people Canada, I'm not sure when they changed, but yeah. we're setting our clocks back on Sunday. Please remember to do that and get your extra hour of sleep. And I think that what that means is if you don't do it, you'll just be extra. Will you be early to things on we Sunday? Fall or back you'll be and late? Out. You might be late. Oh, you'll be late. Never mind. You'll miss some stuff on Sunday or Monday, depending on when you start actually paying attention to time um, or needing to pay attention to time. We will see you next week and hopefully remind you of that. But that means, actually that means that probably means if you try to join us when you think sit and stitch should happen next week, you might just only catch an hour instead of two. We'll see what happens. So have a good weekend. Subscribe. Yes, subscribe. We're at like, we're still, we're hovering at 622. But you can always support us on Patreon too. But more people, if you subscribe to us on this channel, we inch closer to the 700 subscriber sale just for YouTube people. Oh, I keep forgetting. Culturally, we're going to go, yay. Okay, bye. <laughs>